Hi, my name is Pablo Requena and in this video I would like to show you how to cut the top of the head or the head veneer or the head plate so that you can position the nut for, for the guitar. Now, before I start working on it, um, there is a series of videos where I teach how to build a guitar which is available to purchase online and there is information uh, below this video where you can get the link um, to the website and in that video I do this job and, but I do it in a very different way uh, I use this jig which it means that I can cut this um, area of, th of the neck so that I can position the, the nut and I can cut it with the router so that it gives me a really accurate and clean cut. So if you would like to know how to do this job with this jig then you can go over to that website and look for the chapter about the neck and you'll see how the jig works and how to use it. But also in that course I explained that there's other ways of doing this job and you can do it by hand without having to make a jig and without because if you only want to make one guitar you might not want to invest too much time into making jigs and so on which you know they can take quite a long time to make so what we're going to do is that to be able to cut this so that it works really well what we're going to do is that we need to know a few things first is that the cut that we produce in the top or in the head plate needs to be perpendicular to this face, to this part of the neck because then the nut, which I've got one here we want the nut to sit in this area here when this is being cut and we want it to sit uh, at 90 degrees to the rest of the neck also it will be the fingerboard later on when the fingerboard is in place so the first thing that we need to do is to work out where we're going to be cutting so looking at the neck you can see that there's a pivoting point which is there which I already have a line in here which is also perpendicular to the face that we're going to be cutting so what we need to do is to extend this line up and bring it to the front here and the same in this side and bring it to the front so that is what I'm going to do now I'm going to get this line up to the top and I'm just going to mark a little bit there and then I'm going to do this other side like so and I'm also going to mark it up here now if everything is worked out well this tool should line up with the square but if it doesn't it's not the end of the world we can sort of adjust things up so I'm gonna be in this line over there and I'm gonna mark it here I don't know if this will show very well in the video but so yeah there's a slight discrepancy very small so what we're gonna do is that we are gonna use this line as a, as a reference but it's not gonna be the, the final line so what we're going to do is that we're going to use a saw this is a Japanese saw which you can find online very easily and basically we're going to use it to cut near the line but we're not going to cut straight on the line what we're going to do is that we're going to position the neck onto the vise so that we can cut this easily and what will happen is that as you're cutting down keeping this as vertical as possible uh, we're not going to cut it straight to the line because what we will do is that once we've done the cut we're going to be using a plane like this this is a rebate plane and you can see that the blade goes right to the edge of the plane so we can use it sideways like that to trim off the excess to bring it to the line so we'll see in a moment how to use that but first we need to cut all these excess because we got too much material here and the problem with this is that the easiest thing to do here is to cut too much and ended up ending up cutting into into the neck 
which if you cut a little bit, it won't be the end of the world. It's, it doesn't mean that you have to do this all over again, but it will be better if we don't cut it and we can avoid it. So what we're going to do is that I've got a 0.5 veneer here. It doesn't need to be too big. This is about 30 millimeters wide and it's the same width as my neck. I don't know, but on the top of my head, this is about 80 millimeters wide. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to bring this veneer under here as far as I can bring it. And I don't know if you can see, but the veneer comes nearly as far to the cutting line. But you can see it doesn't go in all the way. That's normal. So what we're going to do is that we're going to bring it in as far as we can, but we don't want it to get stuck. So I'm going to bring it out very, very slightly because I want it to be free from there. And then I'm going to get a little bit of masking tape to hold it in place a little bit so that it doesn't go around and disappear. So what this will do is that as I'm cutting down, this saw is going to cut into this veneer. It's a little bit too um, held too strongly. So I'm just going to put it like that because I want this to move. I want it to move easily. That's it. So what will happen is that as I go down, this is going to go down to the veneer and then it will damage this veneer rather than damaging the cedar of the neck, which I don't want that to happen. Right, so what I'm going to do is that also I'm going to bring the... I'm going to change this slide because I need to see this line. There, you can see that better. So I'm going to bring the square to the line and then I'm going to go past a few millimeters maybe like two or three and then I'm going to use the square as a guide for the saw to help me to initiate this cut and now I'm trying to keep the saw perpendicular to this part of the neck, but I know it's not going to be 100% accurate. It doesn't matter because we will sort this out later when we are planning the, um, the excess that I've got here. I took the saw off the slot a little bit too early, so I'm going to have to do a little bit more cutting like this. Also, I want to check that the veneer is... Right, this veneer is not quite underneath the cut, so if I leave it like that, it could cut the neck. So what I need to do is that I need to bring the cut slightly forward the other way so that it goes on top of the veneer. This means that I will have a little bit more planning to do, but it's fine. But I really want to make sure. So yeah, I go up here about four millimeters, and now I can see that the veneer is underneath the cut. I'm going to move it in very slightly, even though I said to bring it out a bit. I just want to make sure that it's not jammed into this area underneath. So I'm going to carry on. It's good to have a look to see how deep you're going because you don't want to overdo it anyway. Even though you have the veneer underneath, you still want to be a little bit careful. Ah, so that's moving, can you see? So we need to be careful because that tells me that we are already all the way down here, but not here. So I'm just gonna push down to open the cut a little bit and then I'm just gonna work in this side and I'm going to make sure that the veneer is well in. I 
And you can see, as I'm going down, this is also giving and this is about to come free. There we are. Not quite, a little bit more. I'm going to bring this in now. There we are. So, you can see that I've got some damage here, not so much, but basically I've got no damage whatsoever on the neck. But now I have all of this that I need to trim, and, you know, we need to do a little bit of work there because this is no good as easy as that but also we need to make sure that the pivot or, or this edge is all the way up to this pivoting point in between these two faces so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to use this plane and just make sure that it's really sharp and if it's really sharp then you will be able to do this job very well because we're going to be cutting the end grain and the end grain, it's harder to plane than the faces or, or along the grain, which means that your plane is to be really uh, very sharp. Now, the other thing is that as we are planing out this way, this end will want to break. So what we're going to do is that because this is already, um, this is a lot wider than it needs to be. Later on, this will be a lot smaller. So over here, the dimension of the neck for the nut position will be 52 millimeters wide. So what I can do is to get a ruler and looking at the center. So if I mark 52 millimeters here, it doesn't even need to be that accurate. So there and there. So you can see we got you know easily 10 12 millimeters excess so we can remove a little bit of here which means that then this won't split out of control because if it splits out of control even though we have more material here than we need i want to make sure that it doesn't just break loose because it could break where i don't want to it's unlikely but it could happen so it's always good to do things in a way that you know that you're not going to have problems later. So I'm going to cut this bit. So from this side, I'm just going to cut this much. And here, if I cut a little bit into the cedar, I really don't care and I don't mind because all of this is going to go and all of this is excess so it's not a problem now with the chisel i can remove that and there you are so all we need to do now is to plane and as i come this way this is not going to break because having this shoulder there it means that all of this is supporting the uh, supporting this this little section here and this is not gonna split so size so that I can see a little bit better so yes I've got a little bit of material here so if your plane is sharp you can see how this is cutting very nicely so I'm just gonna get close to the pencil line that I did earlier on and then I'll start checking that it's square
Yes, I've got this line here and this line there. So I can see that I still got way to go. getting close right we're not there yet but what I want to do is that I want to check Where's my petractor? Here. I want to be perpendicular to the center line, so I want to check now before I get to the final point, just in case I need to do any adjustments. And it's very, very nearly there. It's not quite a hundred percent square, so I'm using this line because it gives me a good contrast between the rosewood and the cedar so that I can see this line very well but nevertheless if it's square or perpendicular to this line it will be perpendicular to the center as well so I'm going to bring this line just there and I can see that it's very slightly off the 90 there so it means that I need to remove a little bit more from this side not much but as I'm approaching the final line what that means is that I can just take a little bit more from here so that when I get to the end of the line it's in the right place so I'm gonna check again yeah that's pretty good yeah and I'm nearly in the right point, so just a little bit more. Right. Yes, it's not quite there yet, so I need to do just a little bit more work in here this is making a horrible noise here with the plane sometimes that's what you get yeah so this is still 90 degrees to the center and this is now on the line and it's nearly on the line here as well. The position that I marked, it wasn't completely accurate on both sides, but now that I'm here, if it's perpendicular to the center, then I'm happy with that. So what this means is that when the neck is done, this will be hosting the nut very nicely. I've got a little bit of masking tape here, which it was there from when I glued these panniers, I put a little bit of tape there to stop the glue coming into this area. And then before I started cutting, I took it off so I can now remove this little bit of masking tape. Probably better with a chisel. There. There you are. So, as you can see, we have a very clean cut, which is also 90 degrees to this face. And we've got a little bit of damage here from when we did the sewing of this little corner, but it's well away from where the neck will be. The neck will be sort of as wide as this nut that we have here. So all of this will be excess. 
So you can see it's actually not a difficult job to do. And there's a few little tricks that you can use to make sure that you protect the neck and that you're not going to cut through into here because it's very easy to cut into the cedar. Um, and before you realize and this off cut is come off, then you already cut too much. And it's, well, uh, if it's very deep, yes, it will be a problem. But, you know, usually you realize before it's too deep. And if it's just a couple of millimeters in or one millimeter in, in and it's just a scratch or, or just a little cut, it's not going to really weaken your guitar. But nevertheless, you really want to make sure that you don't get to that point. So that's all for now. And I hope you find this helpful. And until the next time.